Hello, this video is designed to walk you through the new Assessment Blueprint workbook um, so that you can use it to plan your traditional assessment for the purposes of your traditional assessment assignment in this class. So, um, rather than starting completely from scratch, I've created a, a copy of the workbook here with some of my learning targets filled in. You're going to want to use the workbook in conjunction with the assessment blueprint template so that you can follow the steps given here and I'll explain how the workbook uh, supplements that uh, process by doing some of these calculations for you along the way. So this example traditional assessment is going to be a traditional assessment that I might give in my class to assess your learning and mastery of traditional assessments. So we had uh, a class meeting in which we talked about uh, selected response items. We had a class meeting in which we talked about constructed response items. And there was a class meeting in which we talked about um, scoring guides and rubrics. And so um, this traditional test that I'm designing will assess the content from those three lessons. So starting at the assessment blueprint template, the first thing I'm going to do is enter the learning targets for the unit of instruction in the first column of the blueprint, which in this case, it's the first set of uh, columns in the workbook. So I've already got write good multiple choice items, binary choice items, matching items, short answer items, essay items, and then I've got one more blue, uh, learning target that I need to, to enter. So as you recall, the learning guides contain all the learning targets there, so I'm going to go ahead and copy by hitting Control c that uh, last learning target. Now, when you want to paste learning targets into the workbook, you won't be able to click here and click paste because those cells are merged together, so it doesn't work quite, quite right. So even if I hit OK, it'll say I can't do that to a merged cell. So what you do instead is click up here in the formula bar, and I can paste up here, then hit enter. Now I've got build scoring guides for constructed response items entered as my final learning target. When I go to identify the target complexity, just click in this cell and you'll see over here a little pull down arrow shows up. When I click that, the, com the levels of complexity according to Bloom's revised taxonomy show up here. I'll click create because this is a create target. Um, now, if I want to go ahead and use both dimensions of the Bloom's taxonomy, then I can click here and select the knowledge dimension as well. Now, this is strictly for your information. It's not used anywhere else in the worksheet. Um, but scoring guides, uh, I can either call that conceptual or procedural. There are some procedures um, to, to making and using scoring guides, but I think um, the kinds of questions that I might ask are more conceptual. So I'll insert conceptual here. As soon as I enter in the knowledge dimension, it throws in the word knowledge in this thir third cell because um, in the actual scholarly writings on it, it's always a, a three word name. So create conceptual knowledge is how that level would be would be called. Now again, the the knowledge dimension and the word knowledge at the end, you can totally leave that out and just go with the uh, level of complexity in the first cell and everything will work just fine still. There's also room here for you to paste in the relevant standard. Um, however, for the purposes of this example, I'll just leave those blank. Now, so I've got uh, six learning targets. And when I expand this window, you can see that my first calculation has happened already. 
so for a hundred percent of the points, if all six learning targets uh, had an equal weight, that would come in at about 17%. Now this is uh, the same mathematics that is written in uh, direction number three, right? So if I had decided that the first two were more important and wanted to make them 27% of the total score, and the last one was less important and wanted to make it 10% of the score, and the others at 12. Here's how that works on the uh, Blueprint workbook. So if I come here and put 27, notice that now it's calculating the total percent for what I've put in the intended spot. So if everything's equal, they'd be 17% apiece. But if I want to use a slightly different weighting, I can enter that in this white cell right here, and it'll total it up so that I know my estimates work. So 27% there, and 12 here, 12 here, 12% uh, here, 10% there. Now when I scroll back up, that adds up to a total of 100%. So if I misestimated um, and I accidentally overshot this with 30, I'll see that I get more than 100%. So I know I need to go adjust to balance it out better. So that, um, that set of cells right there is designed to help you balance the relative weighting of the different learning targets. Uh, I'm not going to weight these learning targets differently. I expect them to come out about equally. So I'll leave that blank. As I fill in the rest of it, the actual percent of the points in the blueprint is going to show up here. And then I can compare that to my intended percent down here to make sure that things are balancing out okay. Now again, it might not be exact, but I want to hit it relatively closely. Now I'm ready to start planning my items, which will be featured in the next video.